Okay, it is 8 o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where DJ's at? And I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is another DJ roundtable, and we always have some great people here today. Um, fortunately, I'm missing a, a DJ or two here, but that's okay. You know, it is what it is. Um, again, people are working and doing other things, but we do have a special guest today. Um, and I'll get to him in just a second or two. Uh, first thing first, of course, we have, you know, a lot of our favorite DJs here uh, from all around the country, all around the U.S. And do me a few things. If you get a chance, you got any questions, please put it into the stream. We're here live on Tuesday nights on Twitch at 8 o'clock Central Time. That's 9 o'clock Eastern Time for you people on the East Coast and you people way out in the West Coast. And that means it's uh, basically six o'clock for you. So it's basically dinner time to watch. Oh, and here comes Matt. I said it before, you know, it is uh, always fun. And I see some people popping up in the chat. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Mike, you're in uh, the uh, Wilkes-Barre area. I have my guest here today. He's not too far from your area. Um, he's probably within, you know, a short Short little ride, I don't know, maybe an hour or two. He would he would know better than I do, and you probably know better if you start saying some areas. I see cool thing. I see Fred, the god uh, the godson. Uh, of course, I see Mikey, Mike, and hopefully we'll get a few others here in the chat. Matt, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad to see yeah. you out there in beautiful sunny California. And it wasn't sunny this weekend. Oh, well, we'll not see. Not sunny this weekend. I got well, I got rainstorms coming through here in Chicagoland today. Um, a little you bit got of rain. What we had. No, no All thunder weekend, yet. Man. Thank goodness. It's thundering <laughs> here. We've got thunder in the background. Oh, you got see it, it went past me. It didn't <laughs> it just a little bit of soapy it rain. Us. <laughs> so, and uh, of course, uh, allergies are uh, up today. Uh, tree is high, which is one of my nemesis. So again, I have uh, most of the table here. Um, again, we're missing one DJ here, and we got a full house. And we got a lot of stuff from you. Now, a couple of programming notes. Don't forget, I have three. This is one of three special guests coming here. And hopefully, he will come back here again in the future because we want to get people to come back and have fun, hang out with us, and talk to us about stuff. And because you guys love gear, one of the things we talked about before is DJ furniture. And looking at stuff, reading things, and seeing some things on social media, including YouTube and Facebook and so forth, is a great person to know are people who make stuff. And I want to turn it over here to Nick. He is from New Jersey. He custom makes booths. So DJ booths. So if you want that, I call it a tea style. You guys can call it whatever you want to, the bun booth, uh, that kind of booth that you're out front and stuff like that, custom made. If you want that kind of style or you want the kind of the, the TV style uh, booth, like kind of like Brentley has uh, from Toadmatic. He makes custom booths. I'm going to link in a second to to Facebook. It's Facebook. I want you to go take a look at it. And one of the things I'm jealous on, he has some really cool FBT uh, speakers, which I love my RCFs. He's got FBTs. I love the look of he had on the booth. And it's like I was talking to Tracy. I'm like, oh, man, I need to get uh, that booth. I need to have that booth here in Chicago. Um and I'm like, oh god, that's like a, I don't know, a few hour ride, a uh, twelve hour ride or something like that to get a to few, pick, just, yeah, a just a few, just, just a, a few little hours. bit of a ride. I had the vehicle to do uh, it, but you know, I'm, I'm do I want to travel and uh, oh maybe maybe I got to talk to the boss more. Got to see if uh, we can pull it out a weekend that we have nothing coming on. As always, Nick, welcome to the DJ Roundtable. I appreciate you coming here tonight, sir. And if you could do me a favor. Tell everyone about you and what you do and uh, about how you came around to do uh, DJ booths. Yeah, so thank you for the intro, guys. It's my pleasure meeting you all here for the first time. You know, um, I've been a DJ for a very long time and uh, probably like most of you guys, always trying to do something different, stand out a little bit. And also probably like you guys, I've spent a ton of money on road cases. So um, maybe three or four years pre-COVID, um, I got an increase from a carpenter and I had just bought my third or fourth, you know, $3,000 gigantic old, old style, uh, photo booth box that the old, the old style stacking boxes. And when you get them and you open them up and you see that they're just plywood, you know, I'm kicking myself, man. I'm spending so much money for something that I can walk down the aisles of home Depot and 
with little know-how put together myself. So um, I offered this gentleman, uh, he had a pretty, pretty low ticket wedding and I offered him the option to either uh, buy the supplies and teach me how to make a photo booth or pay for his wedding. And he chose, he chose the first option. And uh, I'll take to my grave that that was the most lucrative wedding that I've ever done. Um, I started searching. I started building my own road cases for a long time. And then, um, as uh, Buddy mentioned, that T-style booth, that hoverboard made so popular. I would assume you got, most of you guys know hoverboard over in uh, Germany. Started pricing those out. I saw a couple of them in person. And uh, I'm not one to you know talk down on any product, but I just wasn't too impressed with it for the price. So... Uh, Put my put my mind to work. I started building those for my own mobile my own mobile use, um, and uh, once COVID hit, I kind of took that off quite a bit. I'm actually sitting at my at my COVID. Uh, this is my COVID streaming booth that I ended up making. People loved it. People started asking about them, um, and I started building them. So um, my you know as far as what I build and, and how I build them, um, you know, buddy mentioned a couple of the styles that I build, but in a nutshell, it's anything that anybody wants that's made out of wood. That's what I always tell people. And, uh, one of the things that I feel has made me a uh, little tiny bit successful is, um, you know, there's no mold really. It's, it's, I have some, I have some standard builds that I present to people. A lot of them you'll see on my, on my Facebook page, but I get calls all the time with people wanting to do something a little bit different. And uh, as long as it's within reason and, uh, you know, the numbers add up and the timeline adds up, my answer is usually yes. So I get a lot of clients that are very happy with having something that nobody else has. Little tiny things like, you know, they want a booth with a rack on the right, but they've only seen racks in the middle or racks on the left. And they want a shelf with specific size or they want a certain height. You know, I'm 6'6". Six, six. I get a guy who comes in from Florida sometimes who wants booths that I'm, I would kill to have, but my staff could never play in them because... They're not uh, as tall as I am. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fun thing. It's not my full-time thing at all. Um, my, my biggest conflict is being able to juggle taking on orders and still doing my own events. And depending on the time of year, you know, wintertime, I open up more slots. And summertime, I kind of slow things down a little bit as, as we pick up and get a little bit busier. Um, and it's been a blessing, you know, uh, everyone always, you know, people always talk about, you know, I'm not a carpenter and uh, I can't stress how easy woodworking is once you start trying it. Most of my builds are built right here in my house uh, with very simple tools, jigsaw, circular saws, table saws. I use all the same stuff. Every, every, every product I get is, is either Home Depot or Amazon. And uh, it's, it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. I wish I had more time to do it, quite frankly. Um, so one of the things um, on uh, your booths, and again, looking through them, uh, the materials, the finishes, um, I see white boots, I see brown boots. I see kind of the uh, wood booths, kind of give it the uh, kind of the rustic barn feel booths. So if you do a bunch of barn events and uh, stuff like that, you could have different kind of looks, uh, kind of a little different kind of facades as well. And on a typical booth, let, let's say the, uh, I came to you and said, hey, Nick, I have the money. I'm going to give it to you today, the money uh, for the um, the TV booth, the nice big booth with roller wheels. And, you know, I want it in white. And I, I can work through with you through email or, e or video chatting or whatever it is and get everything done. How long before money in hand till the time I actually come drop my ramp and pick it up and roll it in the back of my vehicle? Sure, sure. So if I have no orders, my timeline's always six weeks. Um, usually I get them done a little bit quicker from, from uh, time, time I collect the retainer to the time it's either delivered or picked up. Um, but I don't overbook. You know, I want to make sure that every product, I'm, I'm meticulous. You know, um, I want every, every nook and cranny of your booth to be perfect. That's actually one of the reasons why I like working with wood instead of aluminum or polycarbonate or anything like that, because once that stuff breaks, it's really hard to fix. Um, I do limit my slots, but if you were to order uh, here and now, I have one one or two other builds that I'm working on. But here and now, it would be it'd be a six week turnaround, and that's a long that's a long uh, that's like an overshoot just to make sure that I have enough time for any kind of issues or anything like that. And the thing is that and you know, that, someone wants to contact you. I get I dropped the link twice now for Facebook. So if you. you're looking for furniture for DJ furniture, if you're watching this on YouTube, first thing first, you're watching on YouTube. Make sure you click the like button. 
make sure you click the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell icon to make sure that you know when videos up upload. I will have the link to his Facebook on YouTube. And if you're here on Twitch, I put it already twice in the chat so you can link to right to his Facebook, contact him directly. You can ask him about pricing. You can ask him about everything you want to do. Contact him directly. If you're in the Northeastern United States, again, shipping should not be a hard thing, but probably a drive to him. But if you're someplace like us in the Midwest or the West Coast, it's going to take a little bit of more travel. But he's, I was talking to him before. He said he's had clients fly into a local airport, go to U-Haul, rent a truck, put the uh, you know booth in the back of the vehicle, secure it, and take it back to where they're from, either North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Illinois, whatever, um, and then you know just travel back to where you're from. It, it, it's it's one of the things that if you're going to invest money into stuff. Um, that's one of the things I always look at is what it costs for things. And uh, Fred asked a question. Um, and if anyone here has seen them, I have not seen this video. But uh, what are your guys' thoughts on DIY DJ booths out of Amazon tables? I've seen them on YouTube, and I've seen guys take um, Harbor Freight um, tool uh, boxes and turn it into DJ booths. So as someone who makes DJ booths, before I turn everyone else on here real quickly, uh, Nick, I want to get you first shot right there. Have you seen the video? If you have not seen the video, uh, have you ever heard of Amazon? And what do you think about the uh, tool uh, chest there turn into DJ booths? Yeah, so I haven't seen the video specifically. Listen, one of the greatest things from COVID was was Facebook and DIY and um, I'm in that group. I'm in the DIY booths group on Facebook and I see people build, you know, turn an Ikea stuff into booths. Um, and I love it. You know, I see people take, taking, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like almost a joke. People are taking, driving by like a garage sale, taking a picture of an old chest. Like, Oh, what do you guys think? That could be a booth. I love that stuff. I just think that, and again, uh, you know, buddy, you were talking earlier about how every market's different and every market is different. You know, um, for me personally, if you are going to do anything DIY, I think it's got to be refined. And as long as your booth, how, whatever style it is, whatever you make it out of, it could be, you know, a rolling tool cart from Harbor Freight, whatever it may be, it's got to refine it, I think, you know, and, and that's, I think that the, the attention to detail is the most important part, quite frankly. And I, I encourage everyone to try it. You know, people think it's so difficult. Um, I'm not a carpenter, you know. Um, so, so yeah, all those great ideas, you know, you roll it right in with it, with a tool, I'm just thinking out loud with it, with a. Harbor Freight tool tool chest. You have everything you need right in there in the drawers that are already there. You know, you, you style it the right way for the right for the right type of venue and the right type of client. And I think you I think you got a winner right there. And you know, one of the things is, is that I've seen some homemade booths which they put a lot of work in. Uh, I saw Jordan and Taylor they built their own uh, booth, which was really nice. And I've seen some of them put together that it would be me putting it together because I am not good. I don't. Well, first thing first, I got to get the boss to let me buy a bunch of DeWalt uh, gear because I like DeWalt. That's my stuff. Doesn't matter what you like. If you like Milwaukee, you like, you know, Ryobi, whatever you like, you like, you know. It's like, what kind of speaker do you like to have? Well, <laughs> it's same thing with power tools, guys and power tools and stuff like that. Whatever you like, you like, you know, you like Makita, whatever it is, enjoy. <laughs> I like DeWalt. Yeah. I have a lot of DeWalt my, stuff. My garage is yellow as well. There sure. you go. And the thing is that going buy that gear, I, I know Tracy, if I talked to her and said, oh, yeah, I got to buy a miter box. I got to buy this, this, and gave her a price list of Home Depot, just regular pricing for everything. And it's a, it would probably cost more than buying the booth from you. So that's a, that's a thing right there for, for me and Tracy. Uh, for me going to Tracy, my wife, who handles the finances for the business, um, and she's the T and TBM. So she's my boss as well as my life boss, <laughs> uh, asking her stuff and saying, hey, you know what, um, I want to build a booth. She was like, yeah, okay, great. Well, you don't know how to do that one and two. Uh, I'm not going to spend all the money on equipment. You're going to use it once, and that's the thing. I, if I bought a Meyer box, I would not use it more than a few times because I don't do carpentry. I'm not a carpenter and stuff like that. But you have that stuff. You have the gear. You have the know-how. So it would be better for someone like me pay you for your labor and pay you for your materials. Um, so first person we're going to ask for a question here, I'm going to go to Matt because Matt always asks questions and I actually saw him talking about uh, uh, your booths before in a couple of YouTube videos, uh, a couple of YouTubers have your booths. And um, 
I, I saw him asking where you got it from, and I, that's why I tracked you down. And I'm like, oh yeah, these guys, this guy's got cool boots. You, so Matt, because you've asked other DJs about the booths, I let you ask your first question. Go ahead and ask Nick. I mean, I, hey, I, I, which which booths are you referring to? Who have you built them for? Uh, Everybody's no, got one of these now. So yeah, no no one really notable. Uh, my most notable inquiry was Nick Spinelli. He, I don't know if he liked the price. I love Nick, but he never got back to me after I gave him a price for, for the style that he wanted. Yeah. Yeah, like, no, no one really notable. Uh, not, not names that you guys would know. DJ Envy, uh, DJ Teddy Wade out in North Carolina. I'm just trying uh, to N- figure out where I, where I first saw it. But NLE. Sure. Well, we've done, a bunch of, we've done a bunch of different styles. The most popular one's probably the Rolling TV booth. Right. Um, it was DJ uh, Romantics. Blank, blank I saw it. One of the videos from DJ Romantics, I saw you asking. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I like that one. It was kind of like the the paneling one. Yeah. That yeah. One. So so most of the builds are wood. And, um, you know, when they do the TV booths, so I, I let them take out their trim. Gotcha. So most most people look look through pictures. And, they, and you know, I encourage people to, to, to think outside the box. What I say is go take a walk at Home Depot, walk down the trim aisle, find something you like, take a picture of the model number, send it to me. I'll let you know if it'll work or not. Gotcha. Um, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, uh, I'm not shooting myself in the foot, but when you're doing, when you're doing a, a new custom thing every single time, um, sometimes some complications arise, but right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I liked his, this was, this was pretty cool. I, uh, I'm looking at one that's like, uh, there's a guy, I mean, I'm, I'm in California, so I can't get it from you really, but, uh, there's a guy here that does custom, like he's a carpenter. He does custom, uh, bar furniture, custom front desks, stuff like that. And so, uh, he's got one that's like a, I really like the fluted look where it's like, you know, fluted wood, um, just like a white with like a tan or something around the side. And it's just like a nice single modern looking piece. Um, cause I like the, I like the TV booth. I can't do a podium cause I don't, I can't have cables anywhere near my feet. Um, I dance a lot when I DJ and I don't want anything near my feet. So, uh, those podiums and I'm, I don't have time to do all that wire management. I have two laptops a mixer and none of it's in flight cases. It's all just on the table. Uh, so, um, I like those kind of shelf style booths where it's, yeah. and, and, sa- and, you want on it. and same here. I get a lot of people who want to build everything they own into their booths. you know, and I personally, that doesn't work for me, you know, right. I, I can't I'm, commit I'm, to that. <laughs> I don't have enough money to have two laptops, two mixers, two mic sets, and and all that stuff. Plus, well, and and even and even more than two, you know, there's more than two styles for a wedding. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or, right. or whatever whatever kind of event you're doing. So everyone, a lot a lot of people commit. They want racks in their booths. My own personal TV booth has no rack in it. It's literally a shelf. I, I drop my road case on it. Whatever, depending on what I'm playing with, everything that I use is included in my road case. All my mics, all my power, everything. Gotcha. So I plop it right up there. And yeah, you know, like just to just to step back to what to what Buddy was talking on a few minutes ago, Buddy, man, I don't agree. I, I think that buying the tools and I think that hopping on YouTube is is invaluable, quite frankly. Um, and oh, I guess I'm, 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 I'm not I'm not a, I'm not a good salesman. <laughs> <laughs> well, then listen, th- th- then you can talk to Tracy about the new end table that she wanted for next to her bed <laughs> and how well how well you know. And the things you saw at uh, Home Goods that you can you can put together for her, and you never know. Oh no, no, no! I I built stuff from IKEA, and you know, and of course, they give you the Allen key, and yeah, we always got extra parts left over. And the step of the t- top of the table being flat, it's like this. So you know, yeah, no, they're, they're, Listen, I, I know I don't, my I, limits. I know my limits. <laughs> I don't I don't know if anyone has ever had success assembling something from IKEA. Let me let's be honest, it's horrible, yeah, especially. I tried. The- <laughs> But, and and just in general, assembling furniture, uh, when I moved into our apartment, we bought a bunch. Anything that has hinges for doors is the most nightmarish thing to do because they never set them right. And so because they want, oh, well, you need to have play because it's wood and it warps. And it's like trying to get the doors so all, all the gaps are, it's just, it's not worth it. Yeah, if it's fu- if it's functional from Ikea, no, no offense. I, and I like Ikea, but... <laughs> Yeah. I like Ikea stuff too. I love their hot dogs. They actually have great hot dogs. I'm going to go. <laughs> yep. I'm going to talk about food. It's, I'm a Chicago guy. We're, Nick and I were talking about hot dogs because he's originally in the New York area. And, you know, I, I did invite him to Chicago. If you ever come to Chicago, I will take him for a Chicago hot dog. Uh, and, some, and Chicago, we not that deep dish stuff. My <laughs> Tracy likes that. I like the thin crust. I like the tavern style pizza. And speaking Me of too. someone who is originally from Chicago and now lives up in the great cheddar north and uh you can catch them on uh once in a while on code blue cam on youtube 
uh, totally. running in the background as a background character, not as a person getting in trouble, just walking past, shaking his head. That is DJ Brentley <laughs> in beautiful La Crosse, Wisconsin. I uh, know you got a tow booth. Uh, what would you like to uh, ask Nick tonight besides making you laugh? <laughs> I'm not sure, really. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I mean, you brought up, you know, a moment ago, the bad renovations of, for example, say the tool chest or people that do try to recreate the TV booth. And I've seen uh, one tool ch- rack get turned into it and it looked okay at best i mean you could see like you know because it's a big you know the tool thing is a big sheet of metal you're going to see underneath where the tv was mounted the bends in the metal anything that's wrong with it because you know and there's no framing around it to really take your eyes off of those you know problems with it and then the other thing i've seen is when people are doing that or you know outside outside of like you know the toad booth is when you're putting a tv in Either A, it's out in front of the booth, like on the Pro X or whatever that is, or American DJ stand. I don't know because I don't own one. But then you'll see where they have the Plexi on it. But then instead of, you know, like Toad has a sliding panel that comes in, you're going to see drill holes in the Plexi, which, again, in my opinion, is an eyesore. So when you see, you know, DJs using, for, I'm honestly, for the most part, against it, Unless it's, like you said, perfectly refined. Like the Toad booth, like the Danny Max consoles, or some of that. I mean, uh, the consoles look great, but I'm, you know, of Matt's opinion that I'm going to be stepping on cables all night. And I've been really considering getting something like that, but then comes the cable and having to build it out factor. And, like, this last weekend, I had a – I got to my, you know, wedding three and a half hours early – and I honestly only had about a half hour after all was said and done from running everything out by myself. So, you know, when it and like you were saying with those booths, if they don't have a certain look to them, they shouldn't be used at weddings. Yeah, I mean, it depend depending on your market, you know. Um, and and I love talking to DJs because DJs see it the same way that I do. But um, yeah, mo- honestly, I-, I feel like the average client won't care about a lot of the stuff that you just mentioned, and I hate, hate to say that even oh, even high even high end clients, you know. So you know, my, the higher end clients I deal with in lacrosse, which oddly I just got walked away from my highest paying wedding ever Saturday, and my biggest tip I ever got, and I'm still my jaw is still bouncing off the ground from this one, but they were re- they were really concerned with every aspect of it. Like we went through my entire rundown. Do you want totems? Yes or no? Do you want this? That and they knew exactly what they wanted from me. And they wanted my crazy, crazy light show. And I'm like, okay, someone's going to have a seizure or something, but we'll go with it. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I prefer that because that's yeah. the kind of person that I am. And I'm a, I'm a meticulous person. You know, I, I, I like to drop my boots off. I, the, my phrase is always, I want you to come see it in the daytime. I want, I want to give it to you in the daytime so you can see everything, you know, every little nook and cranny. And I'm the same way. My, all my gear is meticulous. I love everything that I offer. I love hooking everything up and... When I get when I get the bride and groom who are looking at everything, I had this one groom, one of the one of the most specific couples I've ever had, um, and I use uh, Airstream DMX, the the original bridge for my lighting for the most part. They're they're coming in, they're ready to take their their cold spark shot, and one of my one of my fixtures just goes out, and the groom just looks and he goes, before the wedding starts, he goes, that fixture's out. I loved it. When, when, when we went, we went, we swapped it, but that's the kind of client that I want for sure. Oh, but yeah, yeah so, some of the a lot of those DIY booths, you know, listen, they're, they're wheeling them in to. You know, mid-range, again, I'm presuming mid-range weddings and the client sees something different and they like that, you know? For me, oh. even, uh, my, you know, my, my front trim on my TV booth gets added after the TV gets on, gets added. And after I after I nail that trim on, I see I seal those holes up. You know, for me, that's a huge, huge thing. A little tiny nail hole, but for me, that, that's a big thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Most, most clients wouldn't see that and would, wouldn't care about that, quite frankly. I think anyway, but that's just my, my two cents, you know? And, yeah, you sorry, know- dancing on... Da- Go ahead, sorry. No, and, and far as you know, uh, anything else that you're doing with uh, gear again, uh, the Toadmatic, um, the boots from Toad, uh, look really nice. The one thing I liked about your booth, you had trim that goes across the bottom. And it, um, if you want to explain, is that held on by magnets or is that held on by Velcro or how do you? No, 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 no. So, ne- so neither. That that's the hinged skirt. 
Um, I, I designed them to, to leave about a quarter of an inch gap on, uh, on a hard floor. So that if they, if you end up setting up on a carpet, you have a little bit of, a bit, a little bit of leeway. And I made that actually mistake on my booth. I did not, I did not do that. That's just a hinge skirt that sits right on the floor. Um, it opens up on some booths. Sometimes I'll do a little magnet hinge at the back. So on the bottom of the booth, there's a magnet. And when the hinge opens up at the two sides of the hinge magnetized to the side of the booth. Um, but most of the time it's just like set it and forget it. I always ask the client how they want that. Most people are just fine with it, just folding and, and, and being free form. I think, uh, the last post that I posted the booth that I was using personally was FB, that FBT stack that you like, buddy. That's, uh, you can kind of, you can see it right there, right in the floor, right before we start my yeah. caster's lock. And I just got to stop drunk idiots from walking over and, and, you know, coming full, coming full speed to the booth and kicking it, which has happened maybe once. That that's one nice thing about the booth. I know uh, toad does it with the, 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 the plastic cover over the TV to at least give some protection. To it's not good. It's not bulletproof. You know, something really, you know, no. bumps into it that can damage the plastic and damage a TV, but it at least less is likely to have like little kids with fingerprints and stuff like that and gives you a little bit of a buffer and you can replace that piece of plastic, um, you know, take it out and replace it. It's a little bit of work, but I'm much rather do that. Uh, Mikey, you Mike know, is asking, do you ever DJ in the Poconos? Me personally? Yeah. You know, no, I haven't. I'm out here in Western New Jersey. Uh, I'm from Bergen County, New Jersey, which is right outside the city. Most of my work kind of stops. Most of my work goes up and down the coast and kind of stops. Uh, ironically, uh, you know, out here, in, I'm in Sussex County. And ironically, when I was in Bergen County, I had about 20 events out here a year. Now that I'm out here, I'm driving a damn back to damn Bergen County every single day. It's just driving me crazy. But we go, we go, you know, we do New York. I, I don't, I don't like, I don't like doing the city much, but we, we do the city. Poconos, no, not, really not many. Uh, the, there was a Pocono venue I did maybe five or six years ago. I loved it because they had a reserved spot for the DJ, which is the only time I've ever had that before. I loved it. It was right by the, right by the load-in uh, reserved for the DJ. I took a photo of it. It was on my social media. But no, not not often the Poconos. No, I, I try to market uh, mostly New Jersey, tri-state. So Mike says he has a cousin lives in. I'm probably gonna screw this up. Uh, Sayerville, New Jersey. Hunka Bunka, Sayerville, Abyss. So, the, the, right those there. Are some some of my early club days were were those venues. Yeah, Sayerville, there you go. South, there you go, Mike. There's South, a connection for you. Yeah. Uh, so the next person who uh, Jeff and I have the same booth. We have the. Um, uh the pro x booth uh mesa uh, media that you actually attach tv on the front of it has a bracket in the back uh the booth is steel and aluminum uh you, you put a skirt onto it nice booth nice and room i've had it for a few years and now totematic came out afterwards and you keep seeing this better and better stuff but jeff and i have the same booth uh jeff what do you think of any question to ask nick that if you were going to buy a booth, what would you like to see or what would you like to uh, have in a booth that would work for you? Well, for me, um, you know, I I kind of specialize in, you know, music videos. So I have to have a monitor of the video display. Um, but uh, my biggest thing is I do not want to have to haul a trailer around. So I want everything to fit into my Suburban. OK, so it needs to tear down It needs to be compact and fold up and fit in into a case or, you know, just like the Pro X Mesa Media uh, and my 55 inch display. So for me, that's what works for what I do. Uh, I really like the look of, you know, some of your um, some some of your furniture on your Facebook page. You know what I mean, I love the I love the detail uh, on the trim. You know, it just looks fantastic. And the Thank protection you. of the TV, I love that. Um, do you make any that uh, collapse or fold up? Uh, the big the big ones like that? I know you make the, uh, the T ones as well. They probably come apart. But do you make any of the larger ones that can hold, let's say, a 55, 60-inch display that can uh, collapse? I don't. I don't. And I, I think that's where that ProX, uh, what's it called again? The, the, the Mesa, Mesa Media. Yeah. And I, I commend you on that for sure, because listen, let's not get it twisted. These big rolling booths, they are tedious, man. They take up a ton of room. Um, you've got to make sure you can get in your venue. you got to make sure that they can fit in any elevators you have. I don't have anything that folds just yet that holds a TV. A couple people have asked. What I always do is I say when I get 10 inquiries for something specific, then I try to take the time to plan it out because 
uh, for, for me, building booths, time is the most important thing and time is the most costly thing. When I'm doing a brand new build I've never done before and I have a lot of trial and error, I'm actually working on a couple styles now that I haven't really, uh, I've never finished. I've been working on them for over a year just because I can't quite get them right. Um, so before I were to take your money and take your order, I'd have to maybe really, really refine my plan and make sure that you were getting a real, 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 real solid product. I definitely think it's doable, um, but I, I don't have anything yet that, that folds that that the TV would would transport inside the booth and it would stay in. Um, right, I, I believe that that's what you that's what you need, right? You want your I know that the the Pro X it travels. No, the, the Pro TV, X TV, uh, folds up into its own case. And yeah, the TV, the TV travels in a case and comes on. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me and the, the style of the wooden style with the trim, I, I could I could see myself making something like that that does fold up, but the TV would transport in the booth and it would fold up and roll still. But then when you when you when you get to where you're going, it would unfold. Well, I'll I know I know I know that right now the big one um that is imported from Poland. Um uh I can't remember the name right now, off the top of my head. Uh that uh, they just came out, Pro X is pushing it. Uh it's like twenty seven hundred dollars uh uh Humpner. Yeah, think um, about yeah, hum, yeah, hum, hum. yeah that, that's hum, aluminum. Yeah. It's pretty substantial. It does fold up. You can fold the arms in, and you you can attach a TV to it. You can't transfer with a TV attached. It's basically kind of similar to the Pro X booth. You have a bracket that is removable, but putting a bracket onto a TV and maybe building a, some kind of a box that attaches to that uh, pedestal kind of DJ booth that might be a thing to do because the pedestal could break down in a couple pieces, correct? Yeah, definitely. The pedestals do break down. Yeah. And a box for a front for the TV. I'm just thinking that's, that's my thinking, but good, good question, Jeff. Cause again, that that's, this is why I have different DJs on here because different people, not everyone has a van like I do, or has a trailer or, you know, a lot of people transport in the back of an SUV or a small vehicle. And that's one of the things yeah. that people have to consider when they're looking at this, does it work for them? And, you know, it, it's like anything else. Those are questions that, you know, people will ask. And it's great having you here because the fact that you can, you know, as a manufacturer say, hey, is there a market for this? Are you the first to the market for that? Or is it just one or two people? So that's something that, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully you figure something out. And uh, again, people follow your his your Facebook. They will be the first to know because I'm sure you put pictures up very quickly yeah, thank and you, have thank that you. on there. Good question, Jeff. Now I'm going to go over to yeah. uh, Mr. Dixon. Uh, Dwayne, what about you? You got any questions for Nick and his DJ booth? If you had to order a DJ booth, there's a question you'd like to ask or anything? Uh, no, not really, because I'm pretty much stuck with the um, vehicle um, situation because I can only put so much in there. And then right now I'm like a one person op. So once you start stacking everything inside of it, this stuff gets kind of heavy, but yeah, I do totally, like totally that, understandable. Yeah, I do like the T, the you know one where you just put it on top and have the um the pedestal on the bottom. I do like those. But yeah, th right th those are, it's just, huh? No, I was gonna say th those are cool. I do have a couple of clients who want real tight builds with those, and instead of throwing them on a T, they'll almost uh will make like a smaller version, like a lower version of a picture an old school facade with a with a one with a wide wall on the front. And then two short walls, so it folds up nice and slim. They open that up. They can they can even like put their own like if they already have a pre made rack, they can put their own rack in that. And then just the, just the top part goes in. We can make the top parts pretty tight. I don't know if you guys oh. know what a what a Mixars Primo is. Mixars Primo was a two channel controller. Mixars is like a sub company of RCF. They have like a, a, a I think they came their most popular mixer was a Mixars uh, Duo. They had one of the most badass controllers of all time. This little tiny two two channel Mixars Primo. Um, and I, I, I built this little, real, real little sl slim booth. I, I want to say the whole thing is like maybe 20 inches wide. Um, and this client, he, he had a, a little, uh, he had a little fold up, like a, a facade, like I said, a lower facade. So like open it up. It's almost like a table. You open it up, you lock it in kind of like, I think the Mesa does that, right? The Mesa unfolds and you put a shelf in. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah put right. Two Imagine shelves. a Mesa. Yeah. A Mesa is a little bit lower. And then on top goes, goes the booth. Um, there's another company I built. It's just the same style. They're, uh, they're out of New Jersey called XL Live. They're like a band DJ hybrid. And uh, they have that same style, with, but it's, it's, it's bigger. It's like a Rev 7 or, or, or uh, I forget what I built for them. Maybe an, maybe an XE. 
Um, but I totally get it. You know, I, I worked out of a Honda Accord for a long time too. <laughs> Uh, and that, that's it. It's the truth of the matter is space. You know, even when somebody asked me to bring out one of my booths, you know, it's, it's fun for me, but it's, it's definitely, uh, it, it definitely gets stressful having, having to pack so much, you know, for sure. Or, or get yeah, an excuse to upgrade his Honda Civic to a, uh, you know, minivan. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> listen, don't, don't do it. Whatever works for you, man. You know, <laughs> that's the golden rule. If it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, some people think it's lazy, but I, I believe it. If it's working for you, if it's not broken, don't fix it, you know. Yep. Sure. And you know that, I mean? that's the, th that's the thing we always try to promote here is that, you know, you have to do what's best for your business and best for what you're looking at. So Jordan Taylor, I know, again, you, I know you have that uh, booth you made um that you guys build have a little tv in front of it uh looks really cool um would you have any questions for nick about a dj booth for you you said earlier that you actually kind of live out of a road case uh can you elaborate yes. what you meant by that yeah so <clears throat> um my systems whether it's my ceremony i, I use a denon prime go for my ceremony you know, and just for an example, that that case, that Pro-X case that houses that den on go has everything that I need for a ceremony. All the cables I need, an attenuator, a battery, a DBX go rack, two Sennheiser G4s. Um, when I'm doing a, a corporate event or not a real big performance event where I don't really have to get down and really, really spin, um, I'm using a Denon Prime 4 with a one, in a 1U Pro-X case. In that case, I have my... Um, uh, my trip light surge protector. I have my dual. That that case happens to have a brand called JTS, which is like a it's like a brother company of FBT, who Buddy and I Buddy mentioned earlier. And everything that I need for that event, for the most part, mics, any kind of cables that I would need. I wish I had it with me. I would show you guys. Very, I'm more proud of of my cases, my road cases, than I am of my boots. Um, and I like to just get there, plop it right on. Uh, the one that Buddy mentioned that 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 FBT uh, stack event that I did a couple weeks ago. Um, that was a performance event. So there I have my Rev 7. So one new case in my Rev 7. Beneath that, I have Sennheiser uh, EWDX, which they came out with about a year ago. Awesome, awesome uh, single single space, half space rack with two mics. I don't work for them, but it's just a phenomenal mic. And literally everything that I need. I have my my um, my Mogami XLRs. I have any kind of cables that I need so in terms of IECs. Uh, if I'm doing something with a power con that you, that's usually in my, in the bag that that's on that speaker. Like I, you know, one of my sets is my, uh, 44 G, uh, Maui's and my power cons just sit right there. But when I roll up with my TV booth, you know, again, depends on the event, you know, if it's a corporate event and I'm, and I can use that standalone Denon system, I don't need to need a laptop or anything like that. That's the case that I'm bringing. And that case just sits right on a shelf. It opens right up and I, Everything I need is there. I'll route. I'll do this mi minor minor routing. You know, I'll, I'll route some power down down through the booth. But in terms of having everything racked in that booth, having to take it all out. You know, if I don't, let's say I don't need it. Let's say let's say um, you know my client doesn't want that booth. Whatever 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 venue we're at. You know, so so um, I, I love building everything I need into my road cases, getting in and out as fast as I can. There's some. There's, I do a lot of smaller events. I do a lot of events. There's not a space for a DJ booth too. You know. I'd love to see your guys' booth, by the way. The reason I ask is because yeah. when we were designing our booth, that's kind of like where I was going with that is uh, we we have two road cases that are similar where I have a power con in the back. You power con, you put your two LXLRs in it, and you're done. Everything's wired up inside. Everything's ready to go. I have one that is a standalone that I can plug a computer in, but then I have another one with a computer. But yeah, I kind of designed – I have like a T. It's basically – um. I took a piece of Cyberlink truss, cut it down, uh, took a piece of aluminum plate, uh, put like a black, I don't know if you know, like basically like the stuff that makes stuff look like metal, so you yeah. put like on the front of a computer or something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of put that on there. And then I used just a piece of black wood and then my case sits on top of the wood. So then if I do need to use a table... I didn't put the ports on the bottom or anything for that reason. If you need to use a table, if I need to, you know, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, uh, you know, something on the beach where it's a, it's like a boat race. And like, I can't, I don't need my podium. I just sit next to the, the sound booth and go. But yeah, I got those three cables. You plug them in, you go. But uh, yeah, and then yeah. we kind of put a TV on ours. Um, I just used like a 
regular bracket and it's just a little like 32 inch tv we put it on the front of the truss and nice, nice it has a skirt on the truss and all the wires and everything i've like uh, the power and everything built into the trussing yeah you hit it on the head you know a lot of people they like i said they keep saying the same thing they, they everyone builds the, everything they own into the booth what if your client doesn't want that booth what if your client wants a different style and everything you have you built in? booths for people to i think you did answer that in the last question that just like you drop your road case in that's kind of think what you were describing a yeah. little bit mm -hmm. i built some like standard you know high, higher 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 shelf type of thing mm -hmm. you know it's like it on uh, the rolling almost booth. similar no, to no, what no buddy and jeff have yeah yep and that's and the thing the is that that's one of the things that, you know, again, contacting him, again, links in the, uh, for Facebook is in the chat right now and the links will be down below for, on YouTube. Um, it's one of the things, you know, talking to him, you know, again, video chat, uh, phone call, email, text, whatever way it works for you and him. Uh, and again, this is something that, you know, ordering it and stuff like that, something like that's probably cheaper to ship than one of the big booths, which I'm sure we're, I was talking to Nick about it before you're, it, you know, it's it's very expensive to ship freight, and you don't want something damaged, so it takes a lot of care to one of those big booths. That's why it's easier to go there with a vehicle and grab it yourself. You know, you, you got secure, you got it back. But one of the smaller booths is probably a bit more economical to ship, and it might be something that you'll be able to do. It's something that you need to talk to Nick with and about as well. Uh, Nick, uh, one question for you. As far as, like, if you ordered a booth, let, let's say a, the big TV booth or uh, the uh, the bun style booth or that, and you wanted, um, let's say, uh, uh, speak on or you want a power con or if you want it XLR uh, in or out, can you do that? Um... For sure. Okay. 100%. 100% yeah. Ba basic stuff, rack hardware, in and outs. You know connections we do uh once people start asking about moving parts and hinges and stuff we'll do it but it's the price is going to go up because i have to do the trial and error. time material like yeah. like anything else time material time, so time APOC, times everything apoc apocalypse aka tommy um <laughs> you have any questions because again you as a man who does a lot of uh uh clubs and parties uh for college would uh what would you uh, like to see in a booth or you have questions about a booth that you'd like to get for yourself yeah i was uh i was actually wondering uh if you do any like permanent installs or anything like that uh potentially at venues uh bars clubs uh because the one of the venues that i play at pretty regularly um the dj booth is pretty small it's kind of just like a small podium and uh, i could actually see something that's bigger and a, a pre-built booth being really uh, useful and and really being beneficial to the venue and to the DJs there. So I was wondering if you do any uh, permanent installs. So I've done some office work, um, not never any club work. Um, I, I had a ran club contact me randomly in Canada, but when I talked to them about the plane ticket out there, <laughs> they 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 weren't thrilled. But no, it's all it's all within reason. I mean, I'll step back for a minute. Uh, it's it, he's been posted my homepage. This is my own install in my house. Um, and this is what I, this doesn't move ever. Um, record storage. It's a T booth, a little modified a little bit differently. That's um, very nice. What, one love of the booths the, I mentioned. Love the monitors. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. The monitors have their own custom, uh, you know, this is all, this is all enclosed in here. It's all custom. Love it. So, um, but I'm, I'm working on a booth downstairs right now, a U style booth that's real big. It's got like a couple really nice plexiglass highlights in the front. That's not going to be a, a mobile booth. That's going to be a stationary booth. The clubs ever call, for sure. I get some people that call me with, you know what I get? I get a lot of window shoppers. I get a lot of people that call me. They want a booth for home. Um, we start talking about specific plans and pricing and then um, never hear from them again. That happens maybe uh, five times a day. Uh, again, it happens to us. You know, as, as a, yourself as a DJ, it happens. People are looking for that five. I, I understand it. Yeah. I, 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 and you're $3,000. Yeah. You know, they're not your clientele. So here, here's a question for you. What is the low and high end ballpark pricing for? I don't want to get nailed down exactly as to the penny, but you know, do you, where, where do you basically start? And, and you know, I know you know sky's the limit, but where do you usually end on a booth pricing so people can have kind of an idea? Yeah, sure, for sure. So uh, it's right there on my Facebook page. But most of our booths, our lowest booth, uh, starts at two thousand dollars. 
And that's for your standard T-booth for a controller, one insert, and uh, one laptop stand that you can put in three different three different spots. Um, there are some times of year where I find myself with excess wood and excess time, and I'll do some promotions. Uh, best price in promotions usually sometimes somewhere between twelve and fifteen hundred, but I'll have limited spots, like three or four slots, real quick, and it's a booth that I can just kind of I know my schedule's right, and I can just kind of bang those booths out and, and within a couple of weeks and get them out. But yeah, typically it's two thousand and up to start. And uh, at the higher end, you know, for something fully custom, something that's going to be an install, you're looking somewhere between four and five thousand. Most of the rolling booths are are between two and two and two and thirty five hundred, depending on uh, some of the details that they want in the booths. And that's important because again, you, you what you spend for your gear, and I'm not telling people out there what to spend, how much to spend, but when you spend money for a gear, you want good quality. And one of the things was talking to Nick. Uh, was quality and he looks at other and we're not mentioning names of any brand or that but he looks at other brands products because again you should know what your other brands do just if you're a car manufacturer uh doesn't matter if you're what your car manufacturer is you look at everyone from a low end to high end and see what cars are similar and so forth so on and if you want to explain a little bit of difference what you see out there on some of those brands versus what you do as far as wood quality and so forth. Yeah, well, I hate to talk down on anybody. You know, I've, I have heard stories of people, you know, coming to me with a product they purchased elsewhere and they need some kind of refinements that they can't, that they can't get. The way, the way that I am as a person in general, uh, you know, I don't want to come off conceit. I'm a, I'm a good guy. I'm a nice guy. Uh, if you have an issue with your booth, I'm going to help you with it. Um, Every single time I drop a booth off, I uh, send links of every single product that I use. Let's say you, you make a mistake and you bang it into a wall, but mis- you know you want to you want to fix that. I'm going to teach you how to do that if you, if you if you really want to know. Um, the 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 most common um, the most common thing that keeps coming back to me is that I use actual three fourths plywood, and a lot of companies are using particle board and and stuff that's not really not really made for you know the the full time working DJ. Um, my boots are heavy, you know, they're, they're three fourths, like I said, three quarter plywood. Um, and most people that buy my booth, um, you know, and they've had something else, I'm not going to you know, name anything. Um, the, the, the compliment that I get over and over again is just the quality is there. It's a solid, solid product and they last, you know, my, my, my own TV booth has seen over 50 events. It's maybe six or seven years old. Um, the thing looks like it's brand new still. And that's, that's the important stuff is, you know, you, you get what you pay for. And again, there's some really great manufacturers out there that do booths and stuff like that. But there is difference in quality. Uh, some places, you know, they want to mass produce stuff and, you know, they're they're charging they're charging accordingly. So you can go to, again, I saw some talk about Amazon before. Yeah, you can get stuff from Amazon, but a lot of wood Amazon is not wood. It's usually particle board or it's, uh, or chipboard or stuff like that versus actual plywood. That right there is a big difference between the two and material. Uh, using two by fours and you know using uh, lumber, uh, using good quality bolts and nuts. And if you're one thing is that I, would, I, I I don't know if he does or not, but if you're in a northern climate like here in Chicago or New Jersey, uh, you know rust is one of the things you got to look at with bolts and stuff like that. So stainless steel nuts and bolts would be a thing that I would like spec in a booth like, hey, the screws, the, the nuts, everything, bolts, I want all stainless steel. I want good quality stainless steel because I don't want to run into a situation if I got to replace a wheel, something happens, I go try and replace that but with that bolt, the bolt is rusted on. I don't want that. And that also goes back to some maintenance on the booths as well and taking care of your gear. Taking care of your gear, I always believe, is one of the biggest things out there and making sure that you can ask questions. Nick is very open, as you heard him before. If something should happen to your booth, he will work with you. Uh, give a chip or scratch or something like that. He will tell you, you know, again, paint codes and stuff like that, stuff like that. He can help you hide those little nicks. And eventually, when you wear out your booth, you go back to them and say, hey, uh, Nick, I want another booth. <laughs> this is the improvements I want in the old booth because I, I live with that. Now I see stuff I need. This is some of the customization I, I like to see in my booth. And again, that's something you work with them and talk to them about. Um, does anyone else have any other questions for Nick here tonight uh, in closing? Jordan Taylor? No. 
Are you guys muted? Do you trust levels? Oh, you tr oh, sorry. Do you trust I, I got one. Do you I'm trust thinking, levels? Um, I don't know. I'm just when we first started out, I just didn't let because of I mean we use the facade, of course. When yeah, we first yeah, started, sure. I, hate the I hate the facade. Hated it. If you I, want them, we have two of them. We have two of them. Yeah. Um, I still I still rock facades. I still look uh, there, there's a I time place for everything. Looks, the facade things, looks nice. Everyone hangs on it, at least for with us. And everyone well, always Your does. facade looks nice, man. Yeah. There's a ours difference. does not. <laughs> we have the Rockville cloth. <laughs> but hmm. I like our podium. I like it's small, it's easy, it's quick. Um we're with all the stuff that we've got to set up anyway, if we're doing centerpieces or you know the photo booths. I want something that's quick and easy. That's you know? what I. That's what attracts me to like the tees, the yeah. tea stands. Is it seems mm -hmm. like a lot of people have um, where it lives in, and they have the big like otter box case, and they just kind of drop it on there, and put that one bolt in, and we're ready to play. Yeah, m m most of my clients that get tea booths, they want to leave their, they want to at the very least leave their controllers installed for sure. But that's where I was with the. I think you made the point where I mean, yeah, what your client what if, yeah, wants a white want setup that? or a black setup or Yeah, and that always that always irks me. You know, I'm in a lot I'm in all these groups and I see people complaining, I can't believe this client the client didn't want this booth. Like, what are they thinking? They said it was too nice. I'm like, I want to chime in. They have a you know it's not your they're, event. They're, they're the client. They're getting married at a barn. You know, they they don't want they don't want a modern looking a modern looking console, you know? So yeah. Well, that's understand. why you should have multiple setups and multiple looks, and I have one you don't want to be a one trick pony. You need to have multiple looks. And, you know, when I like on my packages, I have three different looks because the fact that, you know, I have a very basic look, I have a little more step up look than I have my higher end look. And it all boils down to, if you, you know, when you have that, you give more, you get more versatility and clients can kind of pick, well, I want this, but I want that. And they can customize it and you can take care of your client. And I think that's an important thing Having more than one, you know, uh, one tool in your toolbox is an important thing. I always say it before. If you only tool in your toolbox is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> That's what you don't want. <laughs> oh, yeah. well. Would, would you guys mind if I put my, my DJ Booths page from my website in the chat down here? No, go ahead. Is that okay? Yeah, just because we're talking about looks. And listen, the advice that I have for any DJ, whether they're pro DJs or they've been around forever, I just posted it over there. You guys can take a look. My clients, I've been in business, I'm 42. I've been in business officially. I've been DJing since 2002 and I went official in 2006. My clients, they are ecstatic to browse different looks. Most of my clients, when they call me, they don't even know that they have these options. Um, and it's definitely a lot of work. Um, you have to have different price points and different packages. And I don't mean to sit here, uh, you know, uh, preaching, but, um, I recommend it, man. Whether it's whether they are different color facades or even a plexiglass facade versus a fabric facade, you know, when you when you give people the option to have that, they like they really like that. I find, um, and uh, that's one of the things you know we haven't talked much about about my, my end of things from as a DJ point of view, just a builder point of view. But that's one of the things that I have that's been, you know, one one of the most one of the biggest boosts in my business has been having different looks. For and sure. that's the important thing. So does anyone else have a question? Matt, I know you're asking a question earlier. Matt, you had a question earlier. Yeah, sorry. I'm trying to go through some content. Um, do you trust your eyes or do you trust a level? Because um, no, uh, no, 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 Le level for sure. My, my eyes are pretty good. Uh, I don't trust. I don't trust levels at all. I will listen, never trust the level. So, all so, levels are off. No. My eyesight is perfect. I'm so. going to. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to shed some light on something. There's a. There's a. There's a tool manufacturer called Woodpecker. Have you ever heard of them before? Look no. up. Look up the price of a Woodpecker T-square. Um, and you'll, you'll, un you'll understand, uh, they're, they're like, I, I would build a house with these tools and, and not even, I wouldn't even measure twice. They always say measure twice and cut once. $300 for it. <laughs> yeah. And that, th th those, those are the tools that I use. They're as true as they get, man. Let me tell you, they're okay. awesome. Yeah. I I'll even buy, you know, I buy wood at Home Depot and Home Depot. Oftentimes you'll get some wood and the wood from the store isn't even square. And I'll right, take right. With, the, with that woodpecker square and square it up nice. I do like, definitely... I have a little bit of an un I get a little bit of an uncanny eye as well, 
but no, I'm not, I'm not taking your money and then I and your, I and your product. There's no way. Because my my thing is like uh, I I'd be worried about spending all this money and something not being level or just slightly off or the trims uneven or and and like those little things would bug the hell out of me. Sorry, or the heck out of me. Um, because I just I I'm such a perfectionist that like everything has to be perfectly symmetric. I bring shims with me to shim up the sides of my speakers on the stands to make sure that they're perfectly level, and uh, so that's that's good though. I mean you're. I've, I, yeah. can, I can relate to that. I can relate to that. And again, I'm not talking in specific manufacturers, but I, I have a list of, of saved conversations to <laughs> present to, to present to prospective clients mm -hmm. of people telling me these exact things, man, I can't believe the way this booth came with the money that I spent from it. You right. know, I had a guy, I had a guy call me a couple of weeks ago. He's like, man, I ordered a booth from so-and-so and I feel like I cheated on you. That booth came and man, I regret it, but you know, yeah. it is, it is what it is. And, you know, one of the things also to think about here, Matt, is, you know, you're not going to get uh, Rick and Morty level, uh, level. you know, you're not going to be able to step on and go, you know, like like uh, Morty did when, when Rick made a floor so perfectly uh, level that uh, basically Morty had a heart attack. So you're not going to get that kind of level because we're human. But if it's within reason, you know, you got to have a little bit of a tolerance. I, I Again, everything I'm seeing here, everything he's done, again, look at his Facebook, go on his Facebook, look. There's a lot of great stuff there, a lot of great content. And, you know, again, he's more glad to talk to you as well and maybe point you in the right direction. And that, to me, it's also a great thing, too. If you run into the thing that you can't be the vendor for someone, but you can be a resource for them, that's not a bad thing as well. Because they will remember that when you do have something that they need, they can come back and say, hey, can I, can I come and get this? Can I get that from you? And it's it's very very important to have that uh, customer service in any business you do, yeah. If it's DJing or making a booth, it's very important. So, and that's that's the important stuff. Uh, in closing, does anybody else have anything else to say? Yes, thank you very much for having me, everybody. You guys are a wonderful group. Uh, and buddy, hit it on the head right there, man. We're all our whole industry is all about personality, character, and and positivity. I think so. Yeah, man. Yep, cool we all night. we thank, all try and really really quickly here uh, in the uh, in the room for uh, the DJs here. Uh, I know uh, what a lot of people have right now, but uh, after talking to Nick, what do you think? Uh, this was uh, he had some great furniture. I think he has some great furniture, and I looked at his stuff. So I'm going to say that I'm interested. Is anybody else you know kind of curious about his stuff or yeah? <laughs> Uh, Tommy, Absolutely. Dwayne, okay. get a branch in California. Yeah, over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, here that's on the other I guess side Nick of the needs to what? expand and build a warehouse on the East Coast and West Coast. You know, <laughs> nobody Listen, has what? nice booths here. I mean, it's not a it's not a thing. Um, there's a couple people that have the Max booth. I think the Max booth looks ridiculous, but um, it doesn't. It, it just looks like a table. But um, other than that, nobody. I think there's one guy that has a bun booth. But other than that, like everybody here is just table with tablecloth and a mixer on top. Um, so, I mean, even my facade, people see my facade and they're like, oh, my God, that's so nice. Like it's a hundred and fifty dollar piece from Rockville. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I just. Yeah, but we both got dragon front boards, too. Those things. Yeah, I hate that okay. thing. It's I, so I, heavy. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're, they're nice, but they weigh a lot, man. And they, they can't, weigh, they can't put a sub time. behind it. And if you put subs on either side because of the plexiglass and the wood, it really messes with the sound. And uh, See, that's why my two ones that look like I have two that my uh, daughter's grandpa made for me. He customized them. And so with the plexi in them, I actually went so far they're you know, properly sealed in. But mm -hmm. to eliminate the rattling, I just took a beat of caulk and went around the whole thing. Now, yeah. if somebody cracks the plexi, that's going to be a problem. Right, Dragon but, did make Dragon did make Lycra as well. They made a bunch have, of Lycra. Yeah. Songs, I have so. one of those in Lycra because you know, for the ones where I'm up and above everybody, yep. I'm not so worried about you running into my you know gear with a drink. But when I'm on the floor, like on Saturday, I use my black setup, which has and actually got the front got spilled on. Yeah, yeah. Listen but, for the facade users, J Maz. Within the last couple of years, they came out with a facade. That facade stays stays together and folds like an accordion. Um, I have a three panel in black, a three panel in white. I have a six panel in black, a six panel in white. JMAS facade, the best one out there, in my opinion. Super, super light. Take a look. And they're, and they're pretty cheap, too. Well, there you go. There Again, this is someone that uh, is giving you basically his competition. 
If you really look, think about it, you know, it's G- DJ furniture is DJ furniture. And that's a great thing. You know, someone who is, you know, passionate about what they do, but it has no problem sending to someone to maybe a better fit than his product is. That to me is a, is a very substantial person and a very good person to have. Thank you. And uh, Nick, we'd love to have you back here on here again in the not too distant future to hear about some more uh, stuff coming up. And uh, maybe you can uh, share a few more uh, things, take us down to your, uh, uh, your little factory in your garage and uh, maybe show some stuff, you know, maybe next time. But we'll work on that to. for the next episode. Uh, don't forget, come up next week. I do have Dave Rothstein, Dave Rothstein uh, music uh, band. And then a week after that, I have a great wedding coordinator from Rockford, Danica. She's going to be coming down here and come on a DJ roundtable to answer your questions. So if you have questions, if you're watching on YouTube, ask questions. Any questions here on YouTube, I will forward them to Nick. And then uh, when I get a response back from Nick, I will post the answer back from him verbatim, copy and paste, so that way you can see that. But if you have a question, you're on YouTube, you're listening to your podcast or watching on YouTube, ask questions. Also, go to Nick's Facebook. The links will be down below, as well as his chat group. Go down there, ask questions, talk to him. He's a great guy. It's a pleasure having you here. And hopefully you're having yourself a great night. And for taking us out tonight, I'm actually going to go to Matt. Matt, take us out tonight. Thanks for tuning into the DJ Roundtable. Peace! (laughs) Good night, guys. Later, everybody. Take care. All right. See ya.